The book of Proverbs has a great store of the wisdom that God provides to us that applies at a very practical and straightforward level on the physical level, and that also applies even deeper still at the spiritual level. We can see the wisdom of the Proverbs play out in the life of Christ, and it also applies to the gospel itself, to the need to repent of sin and turn to Christ for forgiveness and for eternal life. Proverbs 22 verse 3 contains all of these things in just this short, this short little saying. And it's stated in a very beautiful way, that, a way that would have been easy to remember for those who would try to learn these wisdom sayings and to memorize them and to apply them to their hearts. So we're going to look at some of the Hebrew of this and appreciate some of the poetry of what's going on. And we're also going to look at the application of it and how it's exemplified in the life of Christ and as well as how it applies to the gospel. The proverb states in the NASB, The prudent sees the evil and hides himself, but the naive go on and are punished for it. In the Hebrew, the proverb is, Arum ra'ara v'yistar v'ufotayim avru v'ne'enashu. And I'm just going to point out a few things from this. First, he sees the evil. In Hebrew, this is ra ra. It's pronounced in almost the same way. In the original, uh, when the original speakers would have pronounced it, you could tell a slight difference in the middle vowel sound, that second sound that comes after the, the initial R. But for us today, in the way that we pronounce it now, it's basically the same, and it would have been very similar. Uh, even when it was originally pronounced. So there's this kind of wordplay coming on. He sees evil. Sounds very similar to saying the same word twice in a row. Ra, ra. It's kind of a poetic device that's being used here. Another feature of this Hebrew passage, or not so much a feature, but just something to point out, the word arum, the, the prudent man. This word can have a positive connotation, here in the Proverbs, but it also has a negative connotation in various parts of Scripture. It's actually the word used to describe the serpent, which was the most the cunning or the most crafty of all the creatures. But here it has a positive connotation. And the word for simple, which is opposed to it. Uh, it's possible that this word means something like open, uh, derived from this idea of being open, as in open to believing anything. The NASB translates it as naive. And there's another proverb, which I believe is in Proverbs 27, which states that the simple believe every word. They believe everything. And that's an important thing to point out. Now, we don't want to be among this group of people that the Proverbs tell us are the simple ones, uh, or that the NASB would say are the naive ones, those who just believe anything. We see that this kind of naive person sees some kind of danger, he sees some kind of evil, and he just continues walking along, and he suffers for it. He's punished because of that. We don't want to be as those who just believe everything we hear. And that's a significant problem in today's society when we're constantly inundated with all the messages that we see on the news and on social media. There are lots and lots of people who are trying to get you to believe things and to join their side for whatever it is they're promoting. The simple person, the person who's so open-minded he just believes everything he hears, will accept all sorts of wrong things, things that are taking bits of the truth but twisting it. The discerning person takes heed to where he's going. He doesn't just believe everything. G.K. Chesterton says something like, the point of having an open mind is the same point, you, you have an open mind for the same reason that you have an open mouth. The point is to close it down again on something solid. You don't just have an open mind to believe everything. You have an open mind to things that are true. So you need to have a mind that's willing to accept the truth, but also one that's discerning enough to find it. And ultimately, that's whatever is in accord with the Word of God, uh, with every word that proceeds from His mouth. That's what we need to accept. That's what we need to be open to, but not to just any teaching at all. So we don't need to be like the simple-minded ones. 
The most basic application of this is really very straightforward. Just at the purely physical level, you see evil, and in Hebrew, the word ra'a can mean something that's dangerous or something that will cause you harm, not just moral evil. And you get away from it. If you see a truck barreling down the highway, you step off the highway. You don't just pass on when you see a rabid animal or a fight breaking out. Now, there's obviously a time where you can intervene and try to prevent some evil if you have the authority and if you have the ability to do so. But in, on many occasions, if you see something that will cause you harm and you don't take action to avoid it, you are not being prudent. You're not being wise. You're being like the simple-minded person, the naive person, possibly thinking, oh, surely I'll, I'll just be fine. I'll just keep going. Won't do anything. And then they're punished for it. Going perhaps a little deeper, though, the, the straightforward and physical application of it is very real. And so it may not be even appropriate to say deeper, but looking at the spiritual aspect of this, we can see when one sees something that is morally evil, when the prudent man sees this is a moral evil, you don't need to just continue on and draw close to it. You need to get away from those things that are tempting you. As Jesus teaches us, if your hand causes you to sin, your right hand even, chop it off, get rid of it. If your eye causes you to sin, get rid of it. If there's something that's causing you, that will cause you to commit some sort of evil, and you see this, you don't need to just pass on like the simple-minded person and just carry on as if it weren't there. Jesus is letting us know through those messages, those sort of mini proverbs or parables, we need to get rid of those things that cause us to sin. When we see moral evil in our life, we need to hide from it. We need to get away from it. And obviously there are times when you combat evil and you can use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, to do so. You can pray and ask God for help and protection from those types of things. But another very real option in this is to simply avoid those things that are going to cause you to stumble and sin. You see the evil, you hide away from it. The wise man knows that this is something he needs to do, and he knows when to do so. Briefly, we're going to look at how Jesus exemplifies this, and just a few quick references. The first we can see is a, that physical evil that's avoided. In Matthew chapter 2, and this is really Joseph who's doing this, but it's in the life of Christ, when Joseph is warned that Herod is going to come and try and kill the child. He sees this evil coming. He's warned of it by an angel, or by the angel of the Lord. He tells him, get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So, very next verse, he got up, took the child and his mother by night, and withdrew to Egypt. Uh, and it continues on there. But we see this proverb play out. Joseph was not a foolish man to hear from an angel of the Lord, this danger is coming and then simply to remain there. And this is not what those who would have listened to Noah, for example, uh, when he was a preacher of righteousness, when he was surely warning people that this danger, this calamity from the Lord for their evil was coming, this punishment was coming. No one listened. They did not walk according to the wisdom of Proverbs 22.3. They didn't walk according to this wisdom of seeing the evil and hiding from it, seeing the danger or the calamity coming. Joseph did, and because of that, the prophecy could be fulfilled, out of Egypt I have called my son, because Joseph listened to the angel of the Lord, because he heeded the message and hid himself and the child and his mother from the evil that was going to come, specifically hiding uh, his mother and the child from them. Secondly, we see the spiritual evil that's avoided. And it kind of overlaps a little bit with the physical and spiritual. But in John chapter 6, we see that after Jesus feeds the 5,000, he realizes or he, he recognizes that they're going to come and try and make him king by force. This would be both a physical evil by forcibly trying to do this and a kind of moral evil because this wasn't according to the plan of God. So Jesus sees they're trying to do this thing which is evil, which is not 
how God wants it to be, and he withdraws. He goes apart. He gets away from the crowds. So we see both when Christ is a child, this wisdom is played out because of Joseph, and then when he's older, uh, Jesus takes this decision. When he sees that this evil is coming, he departs from it. And then it's also worth mentioning, possibly, that Christ escapes from the crowds uh, once or twice or a few times in uh, the Gospels when they wanted to arrest him and take him captive. Because it wasn't yet his time, it would have been evil for them to take him before Christ's ministry was complete. And so Christ didn't allow that to happen. So you see the evil and get away from it. Finally, at the ultimate level, so we've seen this play out at the physical straightforward level, how this proverb works, uh, hiding from evil, the simple go on and are punished, how it works at the spiritual level with sin. We see how Jesus shows us how this wisdom works, for Jesus is the wisdom of God. So he's going to walk according to wisdom throughout his ministry and, and still now. And he helps us to walk by, by his teachings and by his spirit who lives within us. Finally, we see how this wisdom applies to the gospel. There is very much like in the days of Noah, there is a calamity, a destruction that's coming. In the Pilgrim's Progress, we see that Pilgrim lived in the city of destruction. It was going to be destroyed. And Pilgrim, Christian, at that time I think called uh, faithless, he hears this message from the Word of God, and he wants to escape it. He sees that the wages of sin is death. He sees that he's going to be destroyed and punished for the evil that he's committed. And he's, he gets away from it. He hides himself from it. Where do you go to hide from the wrath of God? The scripture teaches us most beautifully that the only place that you go to hide from the wrath of God is to God himself. If you hide yourself in the cleft of that rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, you will never suffer the wages of your sin. Why? Because Christ has already suffered it for us. Christ knew that this evil was coming. God knew that this not moral evil, but that this destruction was coming upon us, and he didn't want that. And so he provided a way out by causing Christ to suffer the wrath of God on our behalf, and Christ did so willingly. He chose to do this out of his love for us, both God the Father and God the Son the one God. He provided a way for us to escape and hide from this calamity that was coming that we deserved. And so we see this proverb teaches us to see that this calamity is coming and to avoid it. But the naive or the simple-minded, they don't heed the scriptures. They don't listen to the fact that this law even written on their hearts that they can tell when I do something evil, I deserve to be punished. People know this just instinctively. It's written on their hearts. But if you're simple, if you're naive, if you listen and accept whatever teaching comes your way, whatever sounds nice to you that can maybe ameliorate and get rid of some of this guilt that you're feeling, just if it makes you feel better, you accept it, then you will be punished for it. You will suffer the wages of your sin. So instead of being like these naive and like these simple-minded ones, this category of people that so many can fall into, we need to be wise. We need to see when evil is coming, both at the physical and straightforward level, at the spiritual level, and at this ultimate level, this gospel level, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and that life is in Christ Jesus. We need to hide ourselves in God so that we can escape that wrath and not be punished. So may we heed the wisdom that Scripture has given us. May we walk according to it by the power of Christ, whose Spirit dwells within us and who enlightens us and teaches us all things. Amen.